Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm going to work on this back bank. I think this will be the last time I add dirt to it. I've added hundreds of tons of clay to that to build it up and build it out, and we're up quite a bit higher than the water level should ever get to, so now I'm going to switch from adding clay to it to adding topsoil, because at this point what we need is for grass to grow across there to stop the erosion. I'm actually considering putting sod all the way across that to speed up that process. Now, I'm kind of excited because I haven't spent much time in the skid loader lately and that's what I'll be doing today. And then we've also, where I dug the last borrow pit, we've got enough rain and it's all clay, so that's holding water and I've got a pond I didn't want. So we're gonna fill that in too. But before we do any of it, I'm gonna use this product called Muck Away. I mentioned it in the last video and it just came in today and I've used this before. You just take a scooper out of this and you throw these little pellets all along the shoreline and it's basically what this is is beneficial bacteria that help to eat up all the decomposing matter at the bottom of your pond. It's one of those things that's hard to tell if it's working or not but I'm going to continue doing it because I want to do whatever I can to make this a healthy ecosystem. So I'll put a link to this product in the description and I'm going to spread this and then we'll jump in the machine and get started. Actually, I guess before I start moving dirt, I should show you what we're working with and what we're trying to accomplish here. So I've left a ridge that's actually a raised spot all the way down this side intentionally. So if we have some erosion, it's not pulling off the bank, it's just taking that extra off. You can see all this gray stuff, that's the bentonite clay that's supposed to be helping to seal. And you're supposed to kind of incorporate that into the soil and tamp it down is the ideal solution. But I've spread it on there and now I'm gonna put a bunch more dirt, topsoil, out here. And some of that topsoil is gonna to spill down and cover that bentonite. And then when it rains, it'll soak into it and that's supposed to basically seal it up. We'll see, hope so. It's just like I said about the muck away. It's hard to judge how effective it is because I can't do some kind of controlled test where I measure leakage today, put this down, and I've done a lot of other things to try to help. But we're gonna continue this and try to build this up. Now let me show you where it's washed out in a couple places. That hole right there is the start of erosion that could take this whole bank out. Now the previous owner told me that 20 years ago, he used to drive his tractor on this bank and it had grass on it and he would mow it with his tractor and then over time, it eroded and eroded and eroded until it was too narrow. And that's a risk you're gonna take. Everything deteriorates over time and needs periodic maintenance but I wanna do what I can to slow it down. Now, you see my big pile of topsoil over there. We're gonna be taking dirt off of that and using that to spread here. And then right next to it is the hole that we dug all of that clay out of and the topsoil, but we need to fill that back in. And all around the pond, we've got these piles right here. These have cattails and and weeds and sod and clay and dirt and just a little bit of everything and we're going to take all of these piles those are those piles are what we cut off the bank when we we made all this bank bigger and pulled it back another five feet or so and those are the spoils of digging that out so we've got one there and there and there and then we'll put all of that into this accidental pond we've created over here and then when I'm done and I'm out of other fill dirt, I'll start putting that topsoil back in there because we do want some topsoil there because that's part of the hay field and we want good solid ground there. So I guess last thing I'll do before getting the 
skid loader out. We got a plane up there. For being as rural as we are, there are planes crossing all day long out here. But last thing I'll do you is show you the pond that I accidentally dug over here that's holding about as much water as the other pond. That is the result of digging that clay out. I, I could dump dirt into that water, which is what I'm going to start off doing. I'd really like to get that packed in before we really hit a rainy season, and that completely fills up with water. All right, let's get started. So I really didn't have any intention of doing a update on the truck during this video, but I kind of got annoyed halfway through and just got out and started talking about it. So everyone's been asking, so we do have that coming up about halfway through the video. I was also going to let you guys know that I may not get as many videos out the next few days because I'm going to an event called Video Creators United that is hosted by the Arms Family Homestead and Keeping It Dutch along with some other really big channels. And they are supposed to be teaching me how to make better videos. And Lord knows I could use that. Now as far as today's project, I feel like I'm making a lot of progress on widening out this dam. But every time I drive out onto it, I still get this nervous feeling like I'm going to slide off the edge because I can see, especially as I pivot, I can see the dirt pushing out from under the tracks. So this is meant to serve three purposes. Number one, I'm raising the level of this dam because we cut it down a little bit when we were widening it. Number two, I want to push topsoil out on top of the bentonite so that it doesn't all get washed down and it stays distributed the way it is. And number three, grass isn't gonna grow very well on the clay so I want to get a layer of topsoil up on the dam. And actually, I guess there's a fourth purpose in that I'm still trying to widen this as I go. And every time I add dirt, it gets just a little bit wider and it compacts more.
extreme close-up. Oh, that's probably pretty hideous for whoever's watching. Probably edit this out. All right, so first time it's really been annoying not having my truck. So I dropped it off on Monday. Something big is jumping out there. That's got to be, so we've caught a bass that was like two pounds out of the pond. It's got to be something even bigger than that, the way as loud as that splashes. But anyway, dropped the truck off on Monday. It called me back on Tuesday afternoon, said your transmission's bad. We're starting the process of getting your warranty approved. They said they don't think it'll be a problem getting it approved, but everything has a process and that all their loaner cars were out. Now, I knew right then I could push for it and demand a loaner car cause, or a rental or whatever because they owe me that. But just chill right now. We've got four cars. My wife has a newer late model car. It's a Dodge Durango. And then my both of my kids have small, fuel-efficient, older cars. And no big deal. I'm always going to be able to get where I need to go. And the part about not being able to have a full-size three-quarter ton diesel truck that can haul my skid loader or dump trailer or anything like that it's an inconvenience but I already knew about that and my loaner is not going to provide that as much as I want to get a truck like mine as a loaner I don't think there's I'd have to be a real jerk to make that happen and I don't know that I'm willing to hey, I'm doing this little job and I go up to put fuel in the skid loader and I'm out of diesel in my transfer tank and I can't haul it to fill it up. So I'm going to be getting five gallon jugs of diesel fuel when this thing uses two gallons an hour. So if I run it for an eight hour day, it's three cans of fuel, it's gonna be an inconvenience. But, you know, worse things have happened. A lot of people fill up their machines with five gallon cans, but transmission went out a week ago and I'm just wondering how long this is going to drag out. Anyway, I'll go fill that up and be right back. So, they've had my truck for four days now, and they told me the transmission's bad, and that there is a process that they have to go through on every warranty claim to get it approved by Dodge. Or, they said Dodge, but I thought it was actually just Ram. That's just a branding difference, I guess. But they have to go through that process no matter what. They said they don't anticipate a problem, but until it's officially approved, I'm still going to be concerned about it. So I'm going to try to call tomorrow and get more information. And at that point, as soon as the warranty is officially approved, I will see if I can get a loaner truck and at least try to get a truck instead of an SUV. I was pretty determined to finish this tonight, but the darker it got, the more uneasy I felt driving down this because the lights on the skid loader are pretty darn good, but there are still shadows and it's pretty narrow to begin with.
Okay, well, I got about 15 feet from the end. I've almost done the whole thing. And I really wanted to finish tonight, but it's just, it's getting too dark and I can't tell where I'm at uh, as far as if I'm up against the fence or if I'm on the edge. So I figured I better just finish this up tomorrow. But I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. Put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.